the Board Bia Quality Mark, ensuring your food is produced to the highest standards of traceability and care for the environment. As a chef, I'm really interested to learn from other chefs, especially those who work in very different situations to me. So in this series, I'm visiting places which produce good quality food in large quantities. Today, I'm at Trinity College Dublin, Ireland's oldest university. It was founded in 1592, and as you'd expect from an institution this old, it has lots of traditions. One of the oldest traditions here at Trinity College is the service of commons. It's a simple three-course meal that served to the fellows and scholars of the college and served regimentally at 6.15 every evening. It starts with the scholars and fellows entering into the dining hall and then with the banging of the door at 6.15, grace is said in Latin. Thereafter, the meal is served. It's quite a quick service. One of the perks that the diners on Commons enjoy is a glass of Guinness, to which they're entitled. That started off as a tradition bequeathed to the college by the Guinness family and has carried on ever since. At the end of the meal, grace is said again and then everybody leaves. As well as Commons, you're responsible for the rest of the catering in Trinity. Tell me a little bit about that. We have a very diverse number of restaurants and cafes on the campus. There's three main hot food restaurants and then we have three cafes. We also have uh, the 1592 restaurant, which is our fine dining restaurant. And that's used in the main by the staff of the college to entertain guests and bring them in. On an average day, how many people would you cook for here? We would probably put through about 4,000 transactions over lunchtime, whether they'd be just a quick coffee and a sandwich or whether it would be a main hot food. We have 16,500 students in Trinity College and about 3,000 staff, so we have quite a, an audience to pick from. However, we're located right in the city centre, so we're surrounded by plenty of competition. That's a lot of people. You need a good team. And how many involved in the catering here? We have 62 staff on the catering, and they're all fantastic. And is source and produce particularly important for you? Absolutely essential. We have a wonderful purchasing team who uh, work with the suppliers and who are very, very demanding. If it's not up to scratch, it doesn't get in the doors. You have people and students from all over the world here. I'm sure the menu changes. It does, absolutely. And we're noticing that people are getting more and more diverse. They're, not, they're wanting to go beyond chicken curry and things like that. It needs to be something a little more ethnically based. And we also find that the students are very conscious of healthy eating. So we, we look to, to provide for that. But also people are getting more conscious of what is in their food and food allergens and things like that. Well, I'm very much looking forward to going to Commons. This is my second time. I was cooking here a few years That's ago right. for a group of journalists mm. and I'm very much looking forward to Commons. So thank you so much Good. for having me here. I hope you enjoy it now. Thank you. Thank you. Max, it's great to be back in your kitchen. It's been a few years since I've been here when we were cooking together for the banquet for Tourism Ireland. So it's lovely to see you. Thank you. You're very welcome, Evan. And I'm here tonight now to see the commons. Tell me a little bit about that now. We have a commons meal every night and that can range anything from 110 people to about 180 people. Tonight we have 125 people. So what's on the menu this evening? Uh, this evening we have a roast butter squash soup. We have a beautiful fresh baked cod with smoked salmon and uh, herb crust, fresh French beans and baby boiled potatoes. And then for dessert, we have raspberry and almond baked with tart. We have a four week cycle of menus, so it changes every day. How many people from this kitchen would you be cooking for on a normal day? You're talking up to about a thousand people, but that wouldn't all be served from this kitchen. Yes. We have four different outlets that it would be served from. And do the students eat here too? We cater for everybody. Yeah, we have two right. service points in this particular yes. kitchen, two dining halls here, and a restaurant downstairs. Yeah. Then we have a Hamilton restaurant and a Westland restaurant, and then we have the Ask Block coffee shop. And how long have you worked here in Trinity? I started here in October 1983. That's a lifetime. That is. And a have, lifetime. You seen, have you seen a lot of changes now in eating habits and what people want? And... Absolutely. Yeah. It has changed big time. You know, it's kind of gone from the 
meat and two veg, yes. it moves on. We do a lot of Asian type of food now with noodles and rice. And yeah. dietary requirements, is that a challenge? It's not so much a challenge because yeah. now we're just so used That's to it. True. You know, true. every function you have now, you've got different dietary requirements for it. So what dish are you going to cook for me? I'm going to do the main course, the bay cod, okay. with the smoked salmon and herb crust. So how do you like work out how many portions to have? We yeah. only actually get the number about half past three. And this, you? this is the list here, this is, is it? This is the list here that okay. we have tonight. We have 125 people here. in total here. Yeah. We have one vegan, two celiacs, and 16 vegetarians. That's a lot, isn't That's it? That's a lot. So listen, tell me what you're going to do with the cod. I have a lovely piece of fresh it cod here. Fab. Beautiful skin on it. We get that from Nick's Fish in um, Ashburn. Beautiful fresh fish. So I'm just going to skin that. Is fish very popular here? Every yeah. Friday in our restaurants downstairs, we have a uh, fish, fish Friday. Every Friday. Every Friday. Wow, There's okay. a choice of three to four fishes. Yes. During the week, what kind of menus would you have? What kind of items would you have on the menu? Changes every day. Again, we have a three-week cycle of menus. But every Tuesday and every, every Thursday, we have burgers on. Yes. Gourmet burgers. Yes. And they go down a bomb. Do they? Beef burgers every Tuesday. And we have yeah. chicken burgers every Thursday. Monday, Wednesday, we would have a cavalry downstairs in our restaurant. And that'll be a roast joint? A uh, roast joint, turkey, roast beef, yeah. roast pork. So it's pin bone, there's no bones. No bones, yeah. already pin bones. Okay. I just wash my hands. Now, just a bit of melted butter. Mm -hmm. Just a butter our dish. A little salver here. There's a fish on top, like so. Yeah. Now, we have here a little horseradish. Just spread that over. Mm -hmm. A lovely flavour. Yeah. Nice kick to that. Yeah. A little cracked black pepper. And then we have some smoked salmon here. It's beautiful smoked salmon. Lovely. And where do you get the smoked salmon from? We also get that from, from Nick's Fish in uh, Ashburn. Sourcing your ingredients is very It's very important, important here, yeah. With your burgers, do you get someone to make them up for you especially? Or they... Yes, we get them from Heaney's Meats in Galway. Okay, the excellent. burgers, they come in made absolutely yes. beautiful. Place of smoked salmon there. A little bit more butter on top. Just okay. melted butter. And then we have a little crumb here with a little dill and flat parsley. Some fresh dill. Yeah, it doesn't right. need any salt with the smoked yeah. salmon. That's a generous portion. That is a rather... In camp, yeah. we get two out of that. Ah, uh, indeed you would. I'm funny joking. I'm the I know you're at home. Do I that. know exactly. You're We've got four out of that at home. <laughs> so that's it, ready for the right. oven. Preheated oven, 165, about 15 minutes. And what are you going to serve with that then? Too? I'm going to serve a hollandaise sauce. Put that in here. Set my timer, 15 minutes. That's fine. And while that's cooking now, we'll just make the hollandaise. OK, perfect. And just over here, we have the egg yolks. OK. We have eight egg yolks here. We have mm -hmm. a pound of butter on melting, mm -hmm. and we have, as you know, a banmary yes. here to cook it in. We just cook it over the, the heat to the figure of eight. It's a classic sauce. It's a classic it? sauce. Goes very well with the fish, you know. Just got to make sure it doesn't curdle, curdle, curdle on eggs. your scrambled egg. You'd end up with. You can see it thickening. It's thickening already. Yeah. Be a ladle there, never. Keep yeah. the butter melted. So just you add slowly to it. In, yeah. I so see you've made this sauce a million times, haven't uh, you? Oh, many times is right. So when I started off, we all the French cooking anyway. Well, I think that's the foundation of good food. When I trained in college, that's what I would have learned too. Now we have all these gadgets, you're buying this by hand, but they're, or you're making right. it by hand, but we have this gadget called a Thermomix. Oh, OK. Yeah, in seven, eight minutes, you just pop everything in and it's made. And it's done. Oh, okay. my God. It's, but it works well, it works well, hard, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's ready, Nevin. OK. And it will add a reduction. This will here. You have it there, yeah? So what have you in there? We have uh, white wine vinegar, shallots, mm -hmm. mushrooms, and some parsley stalks, black peppercorns. Black pepper. So we'll just save that save straight that through it. Okay. Yeah, through the strainer. Lovely. That looks good. Oh, there's the hollandaise ready now. Looks we'll lovely. Bring that over here. Okay. And Simon's coming in with the veg. Fantastic. So we're ready lovely. to serve up. You're ready to serve up. Okay. This is your plate, nice and Plate there, ready. Thank you, room. Simon. No problem. Now, fish should be cooked. That looks good. That is beautiful. No, I think we put the hollandaise in the in here? little yeah. dish, yeah? And we could just put it here. Side. So you always serve it on the side? We always serve it on the side, yes. Yeah. Perfect. Nice potatoes. You gave potatoes a little mint, a little parsley on them. Yeah. And fresh French beans. Is that enough hollandaise? That's loads, yeah. Delicious. That's perfect. Mm, delicious. Looks absolutely delicious. I'm looking lovely. forward to tasting this. Lovely. I'm just going to taste the fish. Oh, it's lovely and moist. And the smoked salmon and the crust. It's really interesting. The horseradish. Yes, it gives it a nice. Mm. Absolutely beautiful. I love that crust. Beautiful. The herbs. Nice crust, yeah. Really Not delicious. too much in it, just a fresh herbs. Max, I'm looking forward to having this this evening for comments. Thank you very much You're for very letting me into your never. kitchen. Great to see you again. And for now, it's back to Black Lion.
stir fries are very quick and nutritious, but you've got to buy the best ingredients from your meat or fish, whatever your ingredient you're putting in, and your vegetables. So what I'm going to do is make up a very simple marinade, and it's going to flavour the pork. Now I'm using quality assured pork strips, which is the pork fillet cut into tiny little strips, which you can use pork chops or pork steak. It doesn't matter. Okay. First of all, we're going to use some dry sherry. A spoonful of this, some dark soy sauce. Look at how rich and dark that is. And then a little bit of sesame oil. Sesame oil is fantastic in stir fries. So this is going to act as a marinade, but it's also going to flavour the stir fry. So I'm using the corn flour, which will thicken it and create a lovely sauce and a coating for the pork. Now, pour this over the pork. At this stage, you can cover this in cling film and you can leave this for an hour or two in your fridge and then take it out, or if you want to, overnight. But this is all about speed, quick and convenience. I'm going to warm up a little bit of stock. So this is some vegetable stock here. And then I'm going to use some dark soy sauce, about a tablespoon of that, and just stir everything through together. I have my wok on, it's on low, so I want it nice and hot when I start stir frying the pork. But I'm going to talk about the vegetables that I'm going to put in. So you can put in any kind of vegetables, whatever's in season. Usually in a lot of Asian dishes, you have pak or pak choy. One is slightly greener. They're very similar in taste and texture, to be honest with you. Or you can use Chinese cabbage. Chow sum is another one. See, these are all classed as oriental greens. In the restaurant, we just simply slice it really thinly, saute it off and serve with a lobster ravioli and little enoki mushrooms, which are exotic mushrooms, which are really, really good. So the first thing I'm going to do is peel my asparagus. So we're using asparagus, pak choy and some mon too. Take the very ends off the asparagus, keep them just for some soup, peel the skin off here using a potato peeler. So any trimmings of asparagus freeze them down and then you can make with a nice little asparagus and courgette or maybe asparagus and blue cheese soup which works really well. So I've just simply finished peeling the asparagus. Now for the pak choy. So remove the end just for your flavoured stock, just have it warm okay. So that's going to act as a sauce. Cut this at an angle so there's great crunch and texture in pop choy. That's lots of that. And then we have munge too. Or you can use some green beans, or you can use some sugar snap peas. Cut them at an angle and they look really nice in the stir fry. I'm a big fan of munge too. I just love it steamed with a little bit of butter and maybe a little lemon zest. Okay, we are gonna finish it with a little bit of chili. So I'll just do that now. Really, really thin to so sprinkle over the stir fry. Just as a little garnish, but also gives a lovely little bit of a kick to the stir fry and just push that over to the side. Ginger, I love ginger, one of my favorite ingredients. So we're gonna put that in when we start to cook the pork using a little microplane, which we can grate into the wok. So we're ready to get cooking. Good drizzle of oil, really hot wok. Put your pork, give that a final stir and we're gonna put the pork in in batches so we are. We're just gonna seal it off, then we're gonna take it out, then we're gonna add in our vegetables. So that's what you wanna hear. As soon as it goes in, really, really hot sizzle. Spread it out. And that's the beauty about using a wok because the heat goes right up the sides. A good wok is a great investment. You can make soups in it, stir fry vegetables, make curries, fantastic. Because the pork is so thinly cut, it's going to cook really, really fast. I'm just going to use a slotted spoon, take the pork out. And I love the way it's kind of caramelized. So that's one batch done. Keep it up nice and full. A drizzle of oil. And then we're going to do the next batch. You can marinate the pork with the ginger, some garlic. So experiment with lots of different flavors. Chili in here, lemongrass. It's amazing now the amount of ingredients now we can get in Ireland, the way our taste buds have changed. That's the last bit. Now I'm gonna keep that, okay? I'm gonna put that in very shortly. So scrape down any of the juices from the pork. So it's slightly caramelizing, and that's really the corn flour in there, the dry sherry, and of course the soya. Okay. This time, we're gonna use the sesame oil for the vegetables. We're gonna grate some ginger, and we're gonna get this nice and aromatic. So a little bit of root ginger. You can hear it sizzling. The pan is still high. I love those smells, sesame, ginger. So in goes the asparagus. Just put everything in. In goes the munch too. We're gonna to what we call steam fry this. So we're gonna use a little bit of this nice stock, and this is the vegetable stock with the soya, the dark soya I used. You'll hear it sizzling now. Just a small amount of that. And then the rest of the pork marinade. Keep it up full of heat. 
keeping all the color, all the nutrients in there. So you're literally just cooking this for a minute. When you use dark soya sauce, there's really no need to put in salt in this. There's probably enough in it. In goes your pork. Scrape all those beautiful juices out and then just mix this all together. And then what I'm gonna do is just heat through a little bit of rice, which I've already cooked and we're ready to serve up. So it's very quick, lovely crunch from the vegetables. I think that's the secret. And then I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of fresh coriander and just simply tear it in so it's lovely and fresh. You could use basil. For in Asia, they use a lot of holy basil, which is like an aniseed licorice aftertaste from the basil. Okay, that's good to go. Just gonna heat some rice. So now I'm ready to serve. Rice is steamed. Again, you can serve this with noodles or some mashed potato, whatever you want. Spoon on the rice to the side. You can place the stir fry on top, however you want to present it. Switch this off and then spoon all this in here. Plenty of that lovely sauce. And the last thing, just a little bit of chili. That gives it a nice little bit of a kick to it. And guess what, a little bit of coriander, just to the side. And I think that's a really good and quick recipe that everyone will enjoy. The Board Be A Quality Mark ensuring your food is produced to the highest standards. The board be a quality mark, ensuring your food is produced to the highest standards. So I'm back here in the Trinity kitchen, and the chefs, as you can see behind me, are getting busy for a busy night in the Commons, which I'm really looking forward to. I'm going to show you a very simple starter. It's a smoked salmon roulade. Absolutely delicious, lovely and light. First thing we need to do is pickle our cucumber. Peel the cucumber using a potato peeler right down the whole length of the cucumber just to remove the skin. I don't need all this because I'm really just doing one portion. Cut it in half. And then I'm just going to remove the seeds here. i just use a small little teaspoon for this. This is a lovely way of preserving cucumber, pickling it. A little bit of sweet, a little bit of sour, which I'll show you now. Caster sugar, two spoonfuls of caster sugar, some rice wine vinegar, or you can use a little white wine vinegar, two of these, and then a little bit of black pepper. Stir this all through, just to dissolve the sugar. So that's your pickling liquor, and it's really nice, even with beetroot. I'm gonna prepare the cucumber, and I'm just gonna cut it into tiny little quarters. So nice and thin, goes into the bowl, and stir that through. We can put a little bit of dill, fennel into it, pickle that into the pickling liquor, stir that through. So it's lovely and fresh. Now, so that's our cucumber. If you can leave that for an hour or two, it's much nicer. I'm gonna serve it in a few minutes with my salmon roulade. So first thing we do, before I fill the smoked salmon, is make up the cream cheese. Just soften this a little bit in the bowl, bring it to room temperature. Now, I'm gonna put in some more cucumber with the skin on this time. So there's gonna be a little bit of texture and there's gonna be lots of flavor into it. What I will do now is just prepare a little bit of radish just for garnish and also we're gonna dice this. So just be really careful when you're doing this. Watch your wee fingers, just layer it all. So I'm just cutting the radish into small little strips, okay, tiny little batons, and then into small cubes. What the radish does gives lovely flavor and texture. Bring over the cream cheese and then put all the radish in there. The cucumber next, and this time I'm leaving the skin on it. Just into slices and then we're gonna cube this. Again, some lovely color with the skin of the cucumber. Bring them all together and then dice them. Just watch the fingers, keep them curved. So that is our cucumber, which goes in. I'll put in some herbs, some lovely fresh chives. You can use dill, you can use fennel, you can use a little bit of basil. You can stir through some pesto, even some sun-dried tomatoes. So you experiment. If you're not a fan of cucumber or a radish, some chopped sun-dried tomatoes are really nice in this. So some nice chives in there, some English mustard, some horseradish. And that's what I really liked about Max's dish was the smoked salmon and the horseradish. Worked really well with the cod to put some of that in there. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna chop some of the smoked salmon. And don't be too particular, you don't have to dice it too small. Or you can use smoked trout, or you know what's really lovely too is smoked eel. Now, so smoked salmon goes in, mix everything in. You can put the zest of some lemon or lime, 
what you could do is toast a little bit of brown bread and have these little canopies. Just smear this over the top of some brown bread or crackers. So now I'm gonna wrap the smoked salmon around this. Cling film, you can use tin foil, but I think cling film is better. Get your smoked salmon, which is pre-sliced, always makes it easier. And then you're just going to overlap this here. So try to make sure you have no holes, if you can, in the smoked salmon. That looks good to me. Using two spoons, I'm gonna get the mixture, roughly do a sausage shape in the middle. You can see all the lovely color. Go right to the edge. Get the cling film and the smoked salmon just nearest to me. And we're gonna wrap this like this. And that's your roulade. Very simple. What I like to do is to wrap it a couple of times. So see the way I haven't cut the cling film? Keep pulling it towards you. This is gonna give you a nice uniform shape. We would do this whenever we're wrapping pork, belly, lamb, shoulders, that kind of thing. Cut this and then we just twist it. And this will keep happily in your fridge for up to three to four days. Bring it to room temperature just for about maybe 20 minutes before we serve it. So from this to this. It's cold because it's been in the fridge and it's firmed up, which is perfect. It's gonna make it easier for slicing. So what I'll do, I'll start to serve up. Before I do this, I'm gonna just do a little bit of radish just to garnish and then the cucumber. Give that a final stir to mix through all the herbs. So it's lovely, there's a nice little bit of pickling. Smoked salmon is lovely and sweet with the cream cheese. It works really well. And the horseradish and the mustard. There's a lot of flavors going on, but they all work really well. So we just arrange this just around the plate. And then our radish, we just overlap it. Garnish this with some lovely micro cress, a little bit of mustard, or you can use wild rocket, and a little bit of micro greens. And these are all growing in my own garden and then some edible flowers. Tiny little leaves, make sure they're edible. Get your salmon. I think it makes it easier to slice it with the cling film, but don't forget to remove the cling film. So just cut it like that. So you can see all the lovely texture there. You have the smoked salmon, you have the little bit of herbs from the chives, cucumber, so it's gonna be really, really delicious. So I'm gonna serve up two of these. So every time you slice it, just wipe your knife. You can make this smaller little soft if you want, or like a little canopy, it's totally up to you. Two of these, I think, makes a lovely starter. And how colorful is that? If you were doing this with trout, you could use a little bit of trout caviar, which works really well with the smoked trout. And that's my smoked salmon and cream cheese with pickled cucumber. in futuro escame oro in tempore opportuno It's lovely to sit down and enjoy Max's beautiful cod, so full of flavor, in the most beautiful dining room with such wonderful company. It's such a special experience, I feel so privileged. Oculi omnium in tesperant domine. In the next episode of Home Chef, I'll be cooking some more speedy dishes and meeting consumer affairs journalist Connor Pope to find out more about the labels on our food. The Board Be a Quality Mark ensuring your food is produced to the highest standards of traceability and care for the environment.